Okay, welcome back everyone. This is uh, theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of IBM Pulse live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org and Stu Miniman, analyst at Wikibon.org. Uh, and this is the final day one wrap up of IBM Pulse, a watershed moment for IBM as it puts its toe in the water big time, I say whole foot in the water, Dave, uh, with, IBM, with, the, with the whole cloud strategy, they have an innovation strategy, very clear, they're laying out their innovation strategy, huge news on an M&A deal with Cloudin, other news all over the web, just overall great, great vibe here. Um, we had a lot of guests on this morning, CEO of SoftLayer, ton of news. Um, before we get into the commentary, just we'll just go down, Blue Mix, big part of the past story, open technologies, you're seeing soft layer at the core of the cloud, IBM putting their middleware in there, huge investment in software, $1.1 billion software investment. You see IBM putting the wrapper around soft layer to explode it for growth for their business, $7 billion forecasted in revenue by 2015. I think it's a sandbag, Dave, personally, I think they're going to do more than that. Uh, and a lot of other new capabilities we have yet to talk about Watson, that's going to be tomorrow, we're going to hear that. that. To me, that's the secret weapon. That's the clean suit, that's the face of the customer. This is cloud meets big data. This is IBM's moment in the cloud. Clearly a, a major, major amplification of the cloud strategy. Moving from private cloud to hybrid cloud. So, um, quick summary, you know, 70% 70, 70 of first timers are attending this event. 70% first timers. This was a Tivoli show, turned into cloud. Whole new ball game. The real focus is on developers and business value in the cloud. Um, it's a quick summary. Dave, I want to get your take on it. Uh, well, first, let's go to Stu. Stu, you've been roaming the halls, social VIP. Um, what's the vibe of the show? Yeah, so, so John, first of all, you said it's a big show. I mean, I was kind of shocked. 11,000 people, you know, it's bigger than Amazon reInvent. Uh, it's as big as like an EMC World or an HP Discover, and this is just you know, one of the many shows IBM has. Um, you know, the general vibe is people feel that IBM has, you know, a really coherent and good story on cloud. Um, if you were to ask most of us only 18 or 24 months ago, um, the message was kind of fragmented. You know, typical IBM, they've got, you know, 20 different products in 20 different groups uh, and you know what is the whole story the software acquisition is really the glue that's going to put everything together it's their infrastructure as a service uh, you mentioned the cloud into acquisition you think that's the glue or the foundation well it, it's it's the it's it's the foundation and all of the services will sit on top of it so uh, I was talking to the founder of uh, of, of software and he said cloud and I wish I could have bought them when we were independent it's great it sits on top of uh, you know our infrastructure as a service and you know so excited uh, that IBM was able to make that acquisition. Uh, you know, at Wikibon, we, we've documented that NoSQL is a huge growth area, uh, and uh, you know, good to see IBM making some more so Massachusetts let me, acquisitions. Let me follow, it's good, it's yeah. Boston company, so yeah. kudos, also kudos to uh, Rich Levendoff, who's the angel investor in cloud and friend of ours at theCUBE, hasn't yet, yet to been on, we got to get him on here uh, sometime. Um, but I want to get your take, drill down on SoftLayer, explain that, I know you've been deep on them, you talked to the CEO, uh, you've talked to um, IBM in, in depth about it, break down SoftLayer, what the hell is it? Is it infrastructure as a service, is it bare metal, is it a hosting company? I was super critical of SoftLayer at uh, AWS reInvent, calling them just a hosting company, why the hell did they pay $2 billion for it? Obviously, the picture's very clear now, they're wrapping a lot of stuff up, but go in depth, yeah, explain yeah, yeah. to the folks what it is. John, and, and you, you bring up some really good points here, because if you look at what they are, they are bare metal in that they're built for performance, and we've always heard that applications can get really good performance on SoftLayer, but you know, is that public cloud? I mean, in the presentation I just went to, they kind of called it you know, a hosted you know, private cloud. So you know, when, you, when you buy from SoftLayer, um, it's not necessarily as fast as some of the private clouds, because it's not just give me a couple of VMs, you say give me a server, and here's the configuration. They've got you know, a handful of CPUs, and then you choose exactly what storage you want. They've got like four or five flavors of that and what networking, and they can spin that up for you in a couple of hours, which is hugely fast compared to what you could do in-house, but not necessarily as fast as what we would think of for the public clouds. And absolutely, there's some analysts that say that SoftLayer is not cloud, but if I look at it, all of the, you know, Watson and IBM Lumix is IBM is and, cloud, that's cloud. And, and all of these pieces that they're going to layer on top about it, there's services that are going to be delivered from SoftLayer, they're going to build out over 40 data centers, and, you know, you can have, you know, flexible, you know, 
services that you spin up and you can pay by the hour, power you can pay systems, by... Power systems is going to be layered on top of soft layer? Well, I'm going to have power systems as an option to choose for my components. So rather than uh, just saying, you know, you know, give me my application, they're actually going to focus on that performance and allow you to get really understand what your servers are. Um, I, I guess if you look at the, you know, is this cattle or pets? It's it's kind of somewhere in between, which is why it's a little bit fuzzy. Well, there's also horses too. We go to horses courses <laughs> for courses. We go to Dave Vellante. Dave, my co-host. Uh, always great to have Dave weigh in. I want to get Dave's perspective on IBM. Uh, Dave, IBM is not Johnny Come Lately company. They don't just make moves and throw some cloud washing out there. Great company, they have discipline, they have great management practices. Not the most nimblest company in the world, obviously they're huge, like HP, but you know, from a quote IQ standpoint, they got a lot of smart people that hold a bunch of patents. They're not going to just throw the kitchen sink at cloud and hope that horse comes in. You, they are really serious. I want to take, get your perspective on IBM's seriousness in cloud. It's a software group, it's a bunch of, it's a confluence of different divisions coming together. They're laying it all out there. What is your take, given IBM's power in the marketplace and also the technology that they're cobbling together? So John, Stu's absolutely right. 24 months ago, when we met as analysts with IBM, and I guarantee the same thing was happening with customers, same thing was happening with partners, You'd, you'd get a briefing on IBM's cloud strategy and it was incoherent, it was not well formed, it just didn't make sense, there wasn't a lot of meat in the bone, and you said, this really is not that good. And that was the feedback that you gave, we gave IBM. You're being polite. Yeah, right, we're being polite. But we, 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 we didn't pull any punches back then, and it, not just us, everybody in the analyst community, and I guarantee the same thing in the partner and the customer community. Now, it manifests itself, now, now inside, I'll also say, Ginny, who before she became CEO, was running strategy at IBM, and one of the big areas that she looked at was cloud. She sized that market. Look, it's, this is classic IBM, right? They spend a lot of time, they're not fast, right? They take their time, they're deliberate, they spend a lot of time, they do a lot of research, they talk to a lot of people, they amass all kinds of information, they look at their m and strategies, and they're very good at m and and they started, a, you know, over a year ago to put together a cloud strategy. And that you know, manifests itself in terms of, of, of the soft layer acquisition, and we saw the cloud and acquisition today. But, but from the outside looking in, it's always worse than it seems, and, and you saw that with the CIA deal. The CIA deal when you know, Amazon you know, beat IBM, IBM contended, but that's classic IBM. They, they know how to dig their heels in in the enterprise, and they're not going not gonna to give ground. So what's happened now is just like in big data, same thing, IBM's big data strategy was incoherent and all of a sudden they took their analytics business, they super glued it to the big data theme and bang, IBM becomes number one in big data. They're doing the same thing, John, in cloud. And, and the soft layer acquisition, IBM's great at making billion dollar plus investments and making those pay off. They're great at acquisitions and now you're starting to see that portfolio come about with a very coherent strategy that importantly involves mobile, and they're using their web sphere experience and they're bringing that to what now everybody's calling pass, the whole development environment, because without developers, you cannot win in this game. So IBM now has gone from nowhere, really you know, incoherent strategy, you know, low on the Gartner Magic Quadrant, it's going to now catapult past number two, which was CSC in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. IBM's going to be right there, setting its sights on, on Amazon. Dave, huge market, I mean, here's my take on this. And in my analysis, I looked at, looked at this in, in great detail um, and following IBM over the years, over the decades, uh, uh, is if you look at what they've done on, in their innovation strategy, it's really well disciplined. If you look at it, they started with private cloud engagements, Dave, a couple years ago, you know, doing their normal IBM thing. Go to install base, do some private cloud, get some data center, a lot of large enterprises, and that got the ball rolling. Then you saw a ton of M&A activity. They were doing a lot of tuck unders, over 110 SaaS properties were focused in under the portfolio they bought in, and then boom, the big deal with, with um, 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 you have the cloud, right? So you got soft layer. Seven, uh, two billion dollar deal there. That's the M&A front. Then they add the organic innovation. We always ask the question to CEOs, Dave, you know, what's your M&A strategy, what's your organic innovation? Huge patents, their commitment to organic R&D is, is, is unprecedented, and that's going to be adding on top of that. We're seeing that with Watson. We've been at IOD and Edge. We've talked to Jeff Jonas, a lot of other distinguished scientists, and they have their share of PhDs working on some great stuff. And then obviously the revenue commitment. They forecast it to the street, $7 billion number by 2015. We heard the general manager of the mid-market this morning say they're already at a billion 
billion, and they're just scratching the surface. So you know they're well on their way for hitting that number. I think they're going to sandbag it and go well over seven billion. And then also the footprint with soft layer with an international expansion, which brings in the kicker on the data protection side when you look at privacy laws in other countries. We heard that out. So classic innovation strategy. The trend is your friend, cloud, big data, with data analytics, with Watson and Discovery, and the organic and the M&A put this together, and I think this message hangs together. Their story hangs together, like a nice suit on the rack, as I say at Nordstrom, say people want to buy that, and I think that's appealing to, to uh, customers. The suit hangs with the scarf, everything goes together, Beautiful. It all hangs on the rack. Now, where the mudslinging is going to get interesting is that seven billion. Maybe maybe that's low. Maybe it's high. Whatever. But a lot of that is services, human services, right? That's IBM. A big chunk of IBM's business. So you know what's coming from you know the competitor in particular, the public cloud competitor of Amazon is oh, we're true cloud, okay? And they've got a, they've got a, basically a case to make there. Now SoftLayer comes in. IBM shores that up. They're going after the hybrid. I think it's legitimately cloud. Um, you know, Microsoft's going to do the same thing. They're going to throw the kitchen sink at it. And, you know, Amazon's going to be pure play. And you're going to have the legacy guys are going to hang on to this business for dear life. And they're going to make investments. The great thing about IBM is two things. One is they got a balance sheet that allows them to make investments. Second of all, they're really good at acquisitions. Juxtapose that to HP. Meg Whitman told me, you know, last March, I'm not going to make any acquisitions until we pay down the debt. So, you know, they, so HP couldn't do what IBM did. So at, a, at somewhat of a disadvantage. Let's, let's so I see that as a huge, huge advantage for, okay. for players so like IBM. The love fest is over now. Let's go to critical analysis. Okay, let's go identify where we think it's weak. Okay, let's where where are those soft spots? Where's the kink in the armor? To me, it's soft layer. Um, it's not a kink in the armor. I think that's a positive. I think that's going to be explosive. I think it gives them a, a bully pulpit to, to bring in new developers and bridge the old school developers into that DevOps mindset. But to me, I think the weak spots this pass. The Cloud Foundry, it feels a little bit like they're groping. I love Cloud Foundry here, I got OpenStack over here. We kind of know what's going on with OpenStack, we'll be at the OpenStack Summit in Atlanta. You don't see Red Hat, and I'm not sure Rackspace is rolling, going, doing handstands today. So, OpenStack, I'll see an open book, Dave, I think is-, is Who's got a strong part. pass? I mean, well, no. Salesforce, right? I don't think that, no? I wouldn't call that. Google? Amazon? Well, I think that's the battleground. So right. Amazon? I mean, who's got a good pass? Who, who, which pass player impresses you? I'm not. I think there is evolving. I think it's early. Nobody. I think I, not really. I don't think anyone. Okay, has a good pass. so that's so, that's a, that's, no, that's a key point, right? But you, they got their fingers in a lot of pies. Again, this is this is again. We're being critical. So I agree with you. We're by being the way. critical. No, but I agree with you. By the way, I don't. I don't think the the pass strategy is fully baked out. I don't think anybody's pass strategy is fully baked out. And by the way, soft layer, I, I think we can be more critical about that. You talk to any practitioner or partner that uses both IBM or Rackspace or Amazon, and believe me, there are many of them, right? When you do a deal with Rackspace, you're not going to deploy it on Amazon. When you do a deal with IBM, they're not going to let you resell with deployment on Amazon. So my point is, there's a lot of customers and you, there's a lot of data on comparisons between AWS and other platforms, and hands down, AWS is, it's not is a killing it. It's not a liability, okay. it's just an observation, okay? So but my point is, all the competitors are getting better, but AWS is still the gold standard, and they're, 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 they're miles ahead of the competition. Now, question to you, Stu, is that gap closing? And is there clear evidence that it's closing? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, so, so one of the critical feedbacks I've been hearing is, you know, IBM, you know, preaches that they are open. And you know, SoftLayer has a ton of APIs, but you know, it's not necessarily simple, and it's not necessarily open. Well, all all APIs know, so. are proprietary. Yeah, a, absolutely. That, right? You know, I mean, but you know, Amazon's not you know open, and they're they're doing quite well. And the other thing is, we say you know, IBM has really been consolidating and you know making a better story. If you look at OpenStack, they still have a rather fragmented approach. They've got a lot of people working on it. Uh, four hundred. Yeah, four hundred. But you know, I, from what I hear, it's more than a dozen teams, and they're not working on all the projects necessarily. So it, it, it's really spotty. Yeah, four hundred. Right. How many people are actually digging in? And, and, and it's not and centrally kind of orchestrated yet. John. Way in here. Okay, so, all right, now, to be super critical, I think the only spot that IBM's kind of covering up, I would call this the scarf kind of covering up, the, the scar um, as an opportunity for them as well, is developers. And they do not have developer traction uh, right now in, in open and in cloud. When I say cloud, I mean real cloud. And I'm not talking about, oh, I have private cloud. Real developers, and I think what you're seeing from the messaging and their 
dev at Pulse is the sign that they want to win there. They're making the investment. That's why I think it's, Dave, it's not even the top of the first inning. If you look at the communities that we talk to, certainly uh, in the in modern web, they just don't have the traction. Now, SoftLayer brings that, and they kind of maybe can package that, maybe it's packaged as part of the deal, and the 70% first-time attendees, that's a good sign. But still, until developers are actually coding, and actually there's an ecosystem to foster those developers, it's really a non-starter. So Cloud Foundry, the past layer, all that is going to come down to how well they can bring in the developer community, because in this market, the old tricks don't work, Dave. The old, hey, we're going to try to open foundation and install things, fork the market. Hey, at the end of the day, the best solution wins, the consumerization of IT, the new model is the best stuff wins. And I think speed is a game, they're talking speed, but I just don't see any meat in the bone with the developers. There's some talk, I want to see that evolve. And well, I think, I'm not going to, that's not a killer fatal flaw. They're, they're obviously standing tall saying, we want but developers. He, but here's what I like about it, is, is IBM's going after it, right? They're marketing to developers, they have dev at pulse here. Again, juxtapose that to what we saw at HP Discover, where we were having discussions with senior HP executives about how we need to do something. We need to have an event, or we need to attract developers. IBM is, is more, they are doing something about it, yeah. so I, I give them high weeks. marks there. And then the second thing is, you know, Lance's comment, Lance uh, Crosby, the CEO of SoftLayer, all services in all data centers, and we're talking about 40 data centers globally. So their strategy is to put multiple data centers around the globe, deal with compliance issues on a local level. Services by their very nature are local. It's a huge market. IBM understands this, and I think that's a big advantage for IBM. Yeah, and I think just some, just some glowing uh, points here. I was impressed with Mike Gilfix, who's the director of Mobile First. He talked about the integrated <laughs> stack. He didn't call it integrated stack. He basically talked about versioning, basically just describing the DevOps environments. They aren't just whitewashing it. They're basically kind of, know, they know what they're talking about, their experience. He's in the trenches. Also, Adam Gunther was on with the cloud offering. These guys are computer scientists. They both have CS degrees. They, they know the market. So it's not like they have, you know, you know, empty suits running this thing, Dave. They actually have some solid people running it. Um, that's a bright spot. So, you know, to, to try to look for the, for the <laughs> for the negative and the critical. I would say that the developer's week in the past is early, but I'm impressed with the guys. Mobile first is a great message. They had the middleware story. Can they pull it off? Will the market let it? Let them pull in their IBM software and how they develop the open? To me, those are the watch items on the watch list here at, at David Paul. Stu, any final comments from you? Yeah, John, I, I think, you know, real good points there, uh, you know, good progress. Uh, cloud making really good progress, the developer community, definitely I heard the feedback that uh, it needs to grow, but good steps in the right direction. Um, and, and the other thing is, you know, IBM does have a lot of shows, so uh, you know, I've heard some people say that there needs to be a little bit of consolidation uh, as to what they're doing. Yeah, there. I mean, they got. I think they're going to pull it all together. They'd be, they'd be idiots not to do that. I mean, I think they're going to obviously put a theme together. They need a developer show. IBM's, they're pretty smart, they should do that. Uh, guys, that's a wrap for day one. I will say just on an on a, on a entertaining note, um, it was great to have David Pogue on theCUBE, Dave, uh, ex-New York Times journalist, high standards, like us, but he's in the new school, he's like us, breaking the rules, doing things, he's doing the uh, emceeing the keynote. Like theCUBE, Yahoo Tech and David Pogue, you know, making things happen in the future of journalism. So it's fun to have someone on that was doing the future of journalism like us, uh, who's entertaining, <laughs> not afraid to say, I don't know what passes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I like the, I like what he's doing. I like their site. I love the fact that yeah, I've, I've, I'm, you know, I, I like Yahoo's strategy. I like what Mar Marissa is doing, even though she's still coming under fire. Um, so, great guest, a uh, lot of fun, and uh, and I think, you know, what I learned from that segment, I've always believed in old school journalism is alive. Uh, old school journalists are, are alive and well. Old school journalism is maybe transforming. Uh, transforming. It's still it's still about trust. It's still about telling the stories, but doing it in a, new, in a different way, as he pointed out. Um, we're going to be here all day live tomorrow. This is a day one wrap up. It's all about cloud equals growth, new capabilities, M&A deal being announced, IBM putting some rubber to the road in cloud. It's the real deal for them. Huge investments, over a billion dollars and allocated for investments in software. Seven billion in cloud revenue forecasted by 2015. And we got all day tomorrow. I think we're going to hear about Watson tomorrow. So stay tuned, this is live, this is theCUBE. Day one wrap up here. Exclusive coverage, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon and theCUBE live at IBM Pulse in Las Vegas. We'll see you tomorrow.